welcome to episode 26 of the Just Run podcast with me, Reese Morgan. And me, Nathan Marshall. This week's guest is Carwin Glynn from a, a small village in West Wales called Foss Trussell. Um, I've also been told you can call it Frosty Arseholes, but apologies if I offend anybody. <laughs> and he's now living in Carmarthenshire. Uh, if my research is accurate, Carwin has completed various challenges over the last seven or eight years from 10K men's health survival fitness to various half Ironmans and sprint triathlons, plus the odd trail run. Um, most recently, he conquered four ultras over four days for an absolutely amazing cause, one we'll definitely talk more about shortly. Um, but out of all of these challenges, nothing could prepare Carwin and his partner for their hardest challenge to date, which... I'm not going to go into, we'll let him talk, talk about that. It's an incredibly powerful story and I'll let him tell him tell that himself. So, uh, yeah, we won't keep you holding on much longer, Carwin. But uh, just one thing I need to say before we dive in is back on episode 11, we had Paul on who runs Good Lush Events. And he is giving all of our listeners a uh, discount to all of his events. You just need to use the code just run 10. So thank you very much to Paul for doing that. And if anybody is thinking of taking part in any of his amazing events, it's just run 10 or one word. Me and Nathan will put all of the the you know the, the stuff in, in the link at the bottom. But yeah, without further ado, Carwin, thank you so much for your patience and for coming on tonight, mate, and, and welcome to the podcast. No, thank you very much. Thanks, guys, for having me. No, no problem at all, mate. Thank you. It's, uh, you're, well, first of all, I should apologise, first and foremost, for my mispronunciation of your time. So sorry if I offended you. <laughs> no, 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 that was perfect. You are honestly perfect. Really? I, I should also say, not not da, is it? Is that good evening? It is, not da, it is good evening, yes. I'm trying to remember from my Welsh days, it was many years ago, so... Glad I got that right. Um, yeah, so thank you for coming on, mate. I really appreciate this. And um, y- your story is incredibly powerful, man. And um, I guess that's where I want to start because, you know, it's t- such a huge pivotal moment in your life. So could you start by telling us about um, Mary's journey, uh, your, your little daughter, and, and what motivated you to take on the immense challenges um, to raise money for the charities that literally helped save her life? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, Beth and I found out that um, um, we were pregnant uh, on Father's Day. and uh, Awesome. Best day of my life. Um, we went to the normal scans, the 12 scan and the 20 week scan and everything was normal. No problem at all. Um, Beth and did find um, the, the the blood, uh, the, um, uh, the sugar in your urine was a little bit high. So we went for an extra scan and um, it was during the 28 week scan that um, Unfortunately, something went wrong. Now, it was COVID time as well, so uh, I wasn't allowed in. Um, but I did get a phone call from Beth Ann to co- that you need to come in now. So obviously, it was quite serious. So um, I could see the consultants there talking to each other and then showing me the scans. Now, obviously, at the time, I didn't have a clear what was going on. Um, but um, what they did do was send us to, to Cardiff uh, Fetal Medicine uh, the day after to have a, an extra scan. And what they did found was fluid um on the back of her head down her back uh, and inside her lungs as well um what this meant then that we um things were escalated further um and we were having scans uh, on, on a daily basis um which they told us uh, and confirmed that there was something called congenital chylothorax which is an extremely rare condition where um Mary's body wasn't able to to um get rid of the lipids the, the fatty that was in her uh, body which meant that her her lungs were filled with it, uh, which really meant that she was drown, drowning from the inside out. Um, and within a few days, then um, they we had to get to uh, Bristol, uh, St Michael's, where they had to put a drain through my wife, through the through 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 my daughter who hasn't been born yet, through her lung, and which I could see on a fifty inch TV screen with about five consultants nearby, um, and see them drain this fluid out of her lungs. Um, first few days, um, things were starting to progress, getting better, but then they, she needed another drain because the fluid had come back with a vengeance and, and it, it, it filled her whole body. Um, this unfortunately triggered labour. Um, so then uh, Mary Glynn was born on the same day I was born, um, uh, nine weeks early. Um, 
with you know a, a single percent chance of survival. Um, so yeah, they they worked on her uh, for hours on end, and I got to see her then the early hours of the morning, and she was in a, she was in a very very sorry state. Um, and the consultant on that day then told us that we should make our memories now um, to take as many pictures and videos as we could because this could be the last day uh, we could spend with her. So, um, yeah, so the, yeah, the day the days are followed then. Lots of ups and downs, lots of um, pressing the red button where consultants and doctors had to come in. Um, and obviously, you know, we, we couldn't hold her. We couldn't even see her, hear her uh, scream because of her, her lungs were filled with fluids. But she did turn a corner, and that's the main thing here. Uh, and it's a positive outcome for us. That, that's what I want to get across, is that it was a positive outcome. Uh, and after five weeks, we were able to hold her for the first time, uh, which well, is wonderful. That yeah. must have been horrific for you. It's, you know, talking back um, about it, and, and that's what's been a lot of therapy for me and my wife as well, is being able to talk about it and be open about it. Um, I found my my therapy through running. Um, and she did so by by talking, but um, yeah, it was the worst worst days and week of 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 my life. Um, you know, we were in Bristol. It was COVID. We were two and a half hours away from home from every, anybody and everybody. Um, but the ways the, the the hospitals took care of us, um, pushed things through quickly, and then following that, then the charities um, they 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 moved heaven and earth for us so that we can be as close as we could to Mary, just in case anything would happen. Yeah, because it all happened so fast as well. How the hell did you process that? Yeah, I mean, you, you can't really. It's it's almost I had to take myself into like a third person point of view, um, because you what you do to go is into survival mode, um, which I found, and I'll speak about that later on when we're doing these ultras. Um, you find yourself in this in this point in life where, you know, you either give up, or or you fight, um, and that and that's what we did. So we were by her side, fourteen hours a day, you know, reading to her, you know, talking to her, because um, that's all that's all that's all you've got. End of the day, um, is is your family. Oh, mate, I, I, how are you and, and your partner now, mate? Uh, it's, you know, we we focus a lot of mental health on here as well because it's something we are obviously strong advocates for and stuff. I mean, how are you both doing now? No, we're doing awesome. Our our mental health is all around Mary Glynn and and how 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 well she's doing. You know, she's had her ups and downs since then. Of course, you know, a lot of complications come with this. Um, but you know, we we're open. Me and Beth are open. We've got a, a wonderful network of friends and family who have really supported us along the way. Um, and and that that means a lot. You know, we we have each other's backs. And I, wow. That's one of the most powerful things I've ever heard, mate. That's that's I can't even imagine it. My little boy is two and a half years old and um mm. it just puts everything in perspective, doesn't it? It really does. Like you said, it's that that must have been so difficult. And like Nathan said, to happen like you're going for those early scans and everything's really exciting and new and you expect everything to be perfect, and then it just happens so quickly. That that is mm. Wow, and um, obviously in in the lead up to this, I've been looking through your Instagram and stuff like that, mate. And um, man, she's glowing now. She's growing so quickly as well. She looks amazing. She does. You know, she she's 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 a little one, but she's a fighter. You know, and and uh, she must get that from her mother. I don't know, but um, yeah, she's doing <laughs> wonderfully. You know, she's had the the assessments, the Bailey's assessments, and she's on par with everybody um, on on her age as well by now. You know, it did take us a lot a long time, but. Um, yeah, she, we 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 got there. Wow, that's great news. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's... She, she is looking like her mother as well. Yeah, she does. She, yeah, she's definitely got her mother spirit, hundred percent. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, I mean, it's, I don't even know where to go from there. Honestly, it's such a it's it's such a. I've got a few friends who've been through something similar as well. And it's, it's a very, I can't even imagine it, but you mentioned something about kind of the strength that you gained, um, you know, the fight or flight type thing that you gained and especially came into action when you were doing the challenge. So obviously we've heard about the background of why you did your challenges. Do you want to talk to us about what challenges you did and the charities that you raised money for first? Uh, absolutely. Yes. So um, we raised money for three different charities, the first one um, is called Cots for Tots. So they work closely with 
St. Michael's Hospital in Bristol, where, where Mari was born. Um, and they provide us, uh, they provided us with accommodation, with food, uh, and just on in general support as well. Um, they were there with us for those first uh, 70 days um, of Mary's life. Um, and then after, after a while, um, we got to come back over the bridge then, um, and that was back to Singleton. Um, and uh, the, the second charity then is Coach Close. Again, it's accommodation for, for parents. Um, you know, no, no parent should have to be more than you know fifty meters if 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 have to be uh, from their from their child. So, um, what Co um, Coach Close is doing in in Swansea is they're renovating their um, accommodation for parents so they can they can be nearby their their, their children. Um, you know, we, again we're from Carmarthen and on a on a bad day it could take an hour, and you know the, the the amount of times they had to press the red button. You know, we wouldn't have that hour. Do you know what I mean? So it's so mm -hmm. so important for for parents in similar situations to us, that they could be as near um, whatever outcome that, that comes to, to their child um, at any given time. So that's the second one. And then the third one then is the whole of that. So that's our, um, that's our local hospital then, so which, which she, um, she finished her journey before coming home. Well, I mean, this is why I love doing this, because the charities I've never heard of, never, ever heard of. And mm -hmm. I guess... The charities that you hope that you never have to have a personal, obviously, experience with. But thank God that they're out there. I mean, shit, the way you're explaining that, hey, how amazing are those? Like, the one particular as well is, they're all amazing, don't get me wrong, but the one cuts close where, again, you wouldn't think about that, like accommodation for parents, because you're not allowed to stay there 24-7, I'm imagining, and you can't go home because in case the worst happens, you want to be there, you know, and support your little one. So that's another reason I like doing this. It's to raise awareness of these incredible charities out there and um, the difference that it makes to raise money for them because that money goes back into doing that for the likes of yourself and other parents that are in that same situation. So, wow, that's amazing. And and what what did you do then? What, what challenge did you take on, if you want to explain? Yeah, so um, I, I've always done a bit of running um, and I did the Ironman back in 2019 before COVID. So I had a little bit of base fitness, but you know, you're know, you talking three years later. Um, so when I was in Bristol and it was opportunity for my family to come down, they, they brought me a, a pair of trainers. And um, so I did go for like early mornings before I went out and to, to do a shift next to Mary. And um, I went so far one time as to see the bridge. And I thought, wow, you know, that's that's home. And it's so close, but it's so far. So, you know, you're on Google Maps then and you check out, how far is it? 13 miles. Okay, half marathon. I could do that, but I need to do 13 miles to come back. So that'd be a marathon. And then I double checked it again and I thought, well, how far is it to home? I thought 110 miles. Hmm. Okay. So at the time, you know, you, you, there's nothing else to think about, obviously, except for, for taking care of your child and your, and your wife. So, you know, I was looking and seeing, right, oh, what do I do? Do I go up towards Sunny Bridge? Do I go down towards Swansea? And that's where it started, really. Um, so taking it more seriously, it started in about uh, February of this year. You know, I was doing maybe one or two runs, but nothing major. And then um, I started looking at events, as I did in the run-up to, to Ironman Wales, um, seeing, you know, what trail runs were out there, what ten, what, what, what I could support as well locally, which is very, very important, you know, the 5Ks and the 10Ks locally, and then building it up um, towards Newport Marathon and then doing like a trail marathon. And I was actually enjoy really enjoying it, especially the trail. Um, so I was thinking, right, okay. And then I got a, a team of people on board then, um, people to do a, like a recce. Um, I had a masseuse, I had a doctor, I, I, you know, the whole shebang. Uh, I didn't want to leave anything. I, I needed to convince my wife as well, which is probably the hardest thing, you know, because end of the day, I wanted to do a wall in one. Um, and we got a doc involved and he was like, you know, you, you've not been doing this for that long. So uh, let's break it down to four days. I was like, OK, four days, one, two, three, fourth of August. And there was um, our anniversary as well. My wife and I's anniversary, six years. So that worked perfectly for us. So, yeah, we did a bit of we did a bit of a trail running, um, a bit of swimming as well. Just anything really just just to keep ticking over and, and being able to tick those boxes in order to, to build it up. Uh, but nothing could. Uh, um, uh, um, sorry, I think of me uh, the Welsh word. Um, yeah, nothing that no, I couldn't expect, you know, to do as much as I did um, before actually doing it. Because end of the day, you don't want to get injured as well. So um, yeah. 
Yeah. So it was from 107 miles from the St. Michael's Hospital to Sangunwa. Yeah. I can't pronounce it. Yeah, think of it like a like a gunner in the army, like Sangunwa. Yeah. Sangunwa. Okay. So, um, and then you did what? And you passed the hospitals that were crucial to obviously Mary's survival. So you know, a, a deeply deeply symbolic journey as well mate which must have been were there any really emotional moments on that like um passing the the hospitals and i uh, did it bring back memories and stuff as well when you were passing that those places it did you know but we we, we started out in st michael's bristol and the consultant that actually saved mary's life um was out there wishing me the best and that was you know that's all i needed to say once i saw her you know, I did break down. We all did, you know, end of the day, got a good cry. And then, um, you know, I, I, I just told them, what, what you guys do here, you, you do ultramarathons every single day. You know, this is nothing compared to what you guys have to do all the time. And, you know, going back to what you said earlier, I, I didn't have a clue. I, I didn't have a clue about these uh, Nikus and Pakus and, and these places which are 24 hours a day care. Um, I, I, I didn't have a clue and, and before we went through this. Um, and now I do. I have a complete and under uh, absolute um, admiration for these people. I mean, they go in there every single day fighting, you know, for, for our children's lives. And, you know, I, we couldn't ask um, for more. Um, so, yeah, we saw them in St. Michael's Bristol. We got to the bridge. Um, and once I got to the bridge, I knew it was 99 miles left. So I knew I was down to double figures, which was awesome. Um, and then, yeah, we got to, to Newport uh, on the first day. And then I think it was the third day then, yeah, we got to Singleton um, in Swansea again, the doctors and the nurses, and I could see them waving from the top as well. They knew I was coming. So they were all waving up the top with, where, where Mary was taken care of. Um, yeah, it's, it's things like that that's going to live long in the memory for me. Um, their appreciation and our appreciation of them as well, of course. Yes. Wow. What an incredible journey. Like, Wow. That's a hell of a challenge, but well done to you, mate. That's such an inspirational, amazing thing that you did. I mean, for the people who don't know, what well, you raised like just shy of nineteen thousand pound, like for these charities. Yeah, we we checked this morning actually with everything that's come through. It's just over twenty two thousand now. So oh, yeah, nice. nice. twenty two. Yes, nice. mate. That hasn't updated then. When I've checked, it still says on your just given. It still says nineteen. I think it was nineteen eight or something. It was, but that's mate. Wow, that's incredible. What um, what was the absolute hardest part of the entire four days? So that's a really good question. The second day, um, so I I teach math <laughs> along with physics, and uh, I couldn't count on the uh, the second day. <laughs> so I did um, I did fifty six kilometers where I should have done maybe fifty two, um. So that was tough because we got to a point where, because S4C was with us um, filming and everything, and they they thought that was the finisher line. We thought that was the finisher line. And I just thought, oh, I'm really sorry. I, I, I've messed something up. I need to go out and do another 5K. And we were getting to, you know, we'd been running from nine in the morning and it was about half seven at night. And one of my mates um, who'd just come back from Ibiza on the Monday, and this was the Friday, and he'd run with me on the first day as well. So did the ultra on the first day. And the second day, he was struggling uh, a bit. And he's a, he's a 2.40 a marathon runner you know he did the newport in, in 241 or something and um i could see him struggle and i was like please get just get again in the um get in the camper because we had a camper with us as well and then he was no if you're not giving up i'm not giving up um and he he has he's actually tore um a bit of his acl so that's what was, he was pushing himself through as well so seeing him in pain wasn't wasn't nice but the second day yeah definitely a struggle the morning after um, the, the third day, I was thinking, oh, I'm I'm so close to home, but you know everything was hurting by then, my knees, my ankles. Um, but yeah, we got the job done. My my close mates, they were getting me up in the morning, doing me my porridge and stuff. You know, me throwing my um, toys at the pram and everything. Like, oh, this is not good enough or whatever. You know, you just get to those low points, don't you? But then you get your yeah. caffeine, and then happy days, you go again. Yeah, that's why you need a good bunch of people around you, man. It's like you said, one of the first things you said was you've got an incredible network of friends and family around you. And it sounds like you do. They're the kind of people you need surrounding you, kicking your ass out of bed, dealing with your tantrums. Uh, we all have them. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> what I mean, I don't think I even need to ask you this question, Carwin, but um, 
what kept you going when things got tough? Or do I need to even ask? No, I mean, it's, it's just, yeah, we, we, we saw, Mary and Bethan were with me for the first two days, and obviously then, you know, they had to go home and start, because my, my wife, she she sorted out this amazing, amazing event at the end. So when we got back to the park, you know, I had about 250, 300 people welcoming us back. Our gross, bouncy cast and all that jazz, she pulled out all the stops. Um, so I knew that was well um, for me, uh, welcoming me back home. But again, you know, seeing Mary, um, that, that was the main thing for me, is... Uh, Seeing her shouting "Daddy" as I was running through the park, you know, it's just yeah, there's there's nothing like it, honestly. You're gonna make me tear up, man. Genuinely, I'm a, I'm a proper crier, and like I mm. tear up when I look back at pictures when I when I completed my hundred mile the month or so ago because Koa, my little boy, ran towards me shouting "Daddy," and uh, I mean that was powerful to me. But I've not been through anything that you have, so I cannot imagine. You know, just seeing that little girl running towards you because the reality is that at one point you didn't know whether she would be here. So what a unbelievable way to finish it, mate. That's wow. Yeah, fair play. Thank you. <laughs> so you That's did incredible. all the running. Yeah. I think your wife did an amazing job with social media and just getting everything together. Because I know how hard it is to actually raise money. Um mm. and she just she's just nailed it. Honestly, I, I just, I, I mean, I'm in awe of her. I mean, the way, you know, she kept getting knocked down, asking people for this and asking for help here and there. And then, you know, people say no because they can't. And I, and we get that. Absolutely, we do. Um, but, you know, she, she was speaking to so many different companies, corporate sponsorship, um, you know, sorting out T-shirts, sorting out uh, food packages, water, get, getting a camper for free, phoning hotels all along the M4. And we were very fortunate, but like four hotels gave us rooms for free. I mean, I mean that's that's fantastic, you know. Knowing our cause, you know, and these was these were independent hotels as well, you know. So it's 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 lovely. Um, but yeah, she she's done a, a hell of a job. Yeah, I'm really proud of her. It, it was, it was a camper van that um, brought me to your attention. I just pulled in B and Q to get some parts to do this one out. And that's I pulled it. in. I thought that's a nice camper. And then when it parked up, I could see your banner on the back. So I thought, oh, what's going on here? And I could see your father-in-law. Yes. He'd opened the door, so I went over and had a chat. What's going on here then? And that was it then. I waited around for like 20 minutes for you to come in. Yeah. It, it, it just, what yeah. a chance. Honestly. You were there, Nate, were you? Yeah. It was just an off chance that I just bumped into him. I was going to be in Q, get wood. And I seen the van in the B&Q. Because I wondered how you, like, obviously it's such an inspiring story, but I wondered, because you sent me saying this is obviously the next person coming on the podcast, and I was like, awesome, and I hadn't really asked you how you, I thought he was just a mate or something, but that's incredible. Yeah, <laughs> complete chance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the partners don't get enough uh, credit, do they, really? It's our wives, our partners, our boyfriends, our girlfriends, whatever, they don't get enough credit because they put up with some stupid shit that we do, honestly. Like, some of the stuff we do, and not only is she probably worried about your safety at times and, and you injuring yourself, <laughs> yeah. but also doing everything that Nathan just said, and like you said, organising that final event, you know, the hog groups and everything. It takes a lot to do that. I mean, you obviously yeah. got... You know, Mary as well. So she was being a parent alongside all of that. So, yeah, shout out to her. If she's there, well done. I don't know what that is in Welsh, but... No, it's die out. Die yeah. Out. Oh, yeah, of course. It's t- oh, tidy, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, she, she, yeah, she did a hell of a job. And uh, also, like you're saying, my father-in-law, Irwin. So he dry- drove the camper. You know, he's almost empty. And he was... Um, he was ensuring everyone got the food out ready. You know, um, we had food parcels from a uh, keg in Mervin in Camarthen, and they, they provide us with with salads and meats and everything I needed. And he would be there then, ready lunchtime, snack time, um, driving on. You know, finding nearby places for us every six miles or ten miles or whatever, uh, preparing us. So yeah, absolute unsung hero. Just just filling my water, electrolytes, everything. So yeah, they're a good team, good network. I think he liked the van, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. It t- took some convincing for him not to buy one, to be honest with you. We've we got a caravan we take down west, but um, do you know what? Yeah, I think he did fall in love. It was tough for him to let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame him. That actually leads nicely on to the next question because you've been talking about food, mate. So you've done try like Ironman, you've said you've done, I've seen you've done like Survivor of the Fittest, 10Ks, trail runs, things like that. But obviously it's very different running that kind of distance and your body goes through insane you know challenges and changes so 
how were you in terms of food? Like, what were you? Obviously, you've just talked a little bit about it. Were you just eating loads of real food, or you mentioned electrolytes? How were you getting, like, you know, the, the nutrition that you needed? Yeah. So basically, for the four four days, I tried to eat as much real food as I could. Um, you know, I I had the beef and the chicken, the turkeys, everything, all the meats, and then um, within the, the 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 food parcels, then we had the pastas and the rice. Um, you know, sometimes I needed a bit of rubbish as well just to get me back up. But um, yeah, as as much real food as I could. Um, some protein bars as well, just get as much protein as I could in. Um, and then basically, I, I electrolyte water, no water, unless you know I was getting sick of it by the second day. So drink drinking more water, but um, yeah, as much real food as I could. Um, tortilla chips, something I never never um, practiced for in, in the Iron Man. I, I was practicing for using jelly babies and stuff, and um, oh, just honestly, uh, sorry about this, but it just went straight through me. <laughs> so then the <laughs> What's run. That? I on... miss that. Oh, it just went straight through me. Sorry. So some, what for me what to was repeat. it that went through you, though? What was it that you uh, ate? Um, the jelly babies. Uh, oh, just, really? Oh. <laughs> just just completely. So then I started to eat some tortilla chips uh, on the run uh, in Tembi. You know, it's, it's a tough run. Uh, really enjoying them. Salt, amazing. So, um, yeah, being a diva on one of the mornings, like, make sure now you get me those Tesco uh, tortilla chips, the blue, bo- the blue bag. So somebody brought me, like, 10 bags of them. So that kept me going for a while. <laughs> so you had a bit of a a downfall, did you? That was your downfall was the jelly baby. So did you have any other disasters? Like, did you have any digestional problems? Were you sick or anything or anything like that at all? Yeah, no. To, to be honest with you, yeah, sorry about this, but no, I haven't. Uh, we did have the porta potty in just in case, um, but no <laughs> trust. No, but saying that, the leader, um, I did change my energy gels and um, that did have an effect on me about two, three weeks out. I did about 65 miles over four days, about uh, two weeks before, and I changed the energy gels, and I still don't really show why I did it, but um, yeah, it, it it didn't go down well at all. So yeah, that's a big thing. Don't don't start changing things right at the end. You just stick to what you know. Um, otherwise, yeah, you'll have hell to pay. Schoolboy era, that is. That's like yeah. that's like buying a new pair of trainers a week before an ultra. You just 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 no, oh, don't do it. It's just no. the worst thing. So, what did you change to from? So I did have the um, the caffeine um, high fives. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think it was the, the, the too much caffeine. So I did have the talk the ru- the rhubarb and custard ones. The, oh, okay. The, yeah, the thirty grammers are oh, they really really nice. So, but I did I did try and start using more caffeine um, high five gels and and yeah nah, dim no. no. <laughs> dim no. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I, I couldn't get on with high five either. Well, yeah, it's just no. made of caffeine for me because, like, again, we're all very open on here. If I have too much caffeine, my body's like a clock. Like, it, when I want to go to the toilet in the morning with, a, you know, TMI, I have a yeah. big cup of coffee because I, I know I'm ready to go. If I was having caffeine in gels throughout the race, mm. my God, I'd have to have a port loo at every checkpoint. It wouldn't be good for me. That would not be a good experience for me or anyone else. No. <laughs> it was a rest. Well, that's the last thing you want to be thinking about, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. God, yeah. It's just something I want to bring up, actually. I don't know if I brought it before. I'm not going to go down the route of talking about poo, but I feel like it's a big thing when it comes to running. <laughs> Nate, do you find this as well? When I'm on short runs and stuff like that, right? Like in yeah. the morning, when I go for 5K, 10K, 8 to 10 miles, whatever, if I go in the morning, I have to take toilet roll me and I have to do a wild poo somewhere or stop. I have to. Yet, on every long distance run I've done, like marathon distance upwards, don't need to go. I just don't go. Like I, I, I maybe go once. I, I went for, I went once in the entire thirty-five hours I was running the hundred miles. Yeah, when I go out early in the morning, my body's just like bam, bam, bam. Why is that? It's, your body's getting rid of all the shit in it. Ready, ready for you to run. It's going into some like flight or fight mode, isn't it? It's getting ready for a battle. <laughs> flight or shite mode. Yeah, <laughs> I, I remember sending you a video of where I took a wild shit when I was doing the coastal path, wasn't it? It was stunning. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, you've done enough. I tell you what, I've pulled in some magnificent areas, let me tell you. It's just uh, some absolutely wonderful areas. But no, it's just one of those things. I don't know if it's because I'm waking up in the morning early and I suppose it's just natural. You go to the toilet and your body gets rid of it. But when I'm on these big runs, I don't know if it's because you're on a race, you're conscious of moving forward. 
your diet is all over the shop because you're eating random things. And I just don't, I don't, I never need to go. I just don't, I, I, it's strange. Mm. Anyway, let's move on. I, I, <laughs> let's not talk about that. I somehow we got from you running a wonderful run, Carwin, to talking about poo. So I must apologize. Um, <laughs> um, have you, so, so forgive me, when is it that you actually finished this race, this, this, this challenge? Sorry. Yeah, no. So um, we did it from the 1st of August to the 4th. So one, two, three, four, and finished right. on the 4th of August. So a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. finished on the 4th. Yeah. So 10 days ago. So have you, how have your body been since? You know, the, the first few days, I felt like I could go again. Like on the Monday, I don't know if it was adrenaline, it must have been. And I felt like lad, I could go again if I needed to go to back to Fostrasol, which is, I have run from here, which is a marathon. Um, but I didn't, thank God. Uh, but then as the week gone, gone, went on, my HRV status started to go really low um, to the point where it got to 27 by the weekend. So, um, yeah, so my body, even though I felt strong, um, I knew I, I was not fighting something because I wasn't ill, but um, I knew I'd put my, my body through trauma, basically, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but then I did go for a run on Sunday because I was bored. Um, and then I just couldn't sleep that night then, which is crazy. But again, I never felt so strong. My, my legs felt really strong. Because so obviously I've done a lot of training, but I know I've done something, you know, to my body, which I, it needs to recover. So um, I've been taking it easy since then, but I can't wait to get back. Do you know what I mean? I've, I think I've got the, uh, yeah, I'm a bit addicted now. So I need to get back on there. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what you got planned next? This is it, but that's, I've got a whiteboard in the in the um in the, in the garage, and it just says it says Beth Nassar, what next? Yeah, so um I I don't know um I I know Iron Man, but then I've done Iron Man. Do you know what I mean? Um I don't know I don't know any suggestions. Oh, mate, I've got plenty. Uh, I'll send you a list after. You that's, well, that's a big mistake to ask Nathan. That is, we haven't got enough time <laughs> to talk about the ideas Nathan will have for you, mate. I, I apologise in advance, Carwin, for the next few messages you're about to get off him. Um, but the uh, well, mate, you, you want to? I don't know if you've ever done any of the Pegasus Ultra Runs and stuff. Obviously, that me and Nathan have done. Nathan will back me up here, and anybody who's listening, like it is, they are an incredible. If you want to do your first proper ultra, like trail in the middle of nowhere and have the absolute best experience like all right the routes are amazing the volunteers are angels they, they they honestly make the event the checkpoints are stacked with everything you can possibly dream of in terms of food it's just an entire reese who runs it reese jenkins he waits at the finish line for every single person until the last person comes across to give you a hug and your medal it's just we cannot stress enough how good they are and um They've got some fantastic routes from 30 miles up to, well, 200 now, called the Wild Horse. Um, yeah. Over, what, that'll probably take four or five days, 200 miles. <laughs> so, I mean, there's, there's plenty out there, but I'd recommend, you know, you don't have to, but I always recommend Pegasus. I just think okay. that's really what got my kind of claws in there when, when I started doing it. My, my first ultra was with 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 them up in mid Wales and uh, uh, never looked back since. So plenty okay. for you to do, mate. Plenty of ideas and uh, excited to see what you got lined up next. Really, I mean, you've just run 110 miles, mate. That's incredible. So we'll mm -hmm. rejoice tonight, mate. You're in that world. <laughs> That's it now. Yeah, just got to apologise to my wife, not to me. But uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes down now. Just tell us for charity. Yes, that's a good shout. <laughs> 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 I agree. Do you um did do you do any like active recovery and stuff like that, Carwin? Like after the run, do you, do you do yoga and stretching and things like that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I I did a lot of stretching. I used the um one of the uh, the uh, we had a, a masseuse, Lara and Peter boyfriend as well with us, and he was running a lot with me, and um he let me borrow his is it Pulso um the um the compression boots. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I'd be using them um. For the last ten days, basically, and I, 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 I'm sure, yeah, it's. Um, I don't think it's a placebo. I, I genuinely felt like my knees were in a better place. Um, for that, the, the, the morning, then you know, because I do it. So yeah, mm. uh, stretches, active stretching, um, in the garage as well. Um, but basically, I went back to being dad. So I'm a teacher. So I'm off for 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 the summer holidays. So yeah, I get to spend as much quality time with my uh, daughter as I can. Nice. Um, 
Nice. One of the only perks of being a teacher, I think, and my sister's a teacher. So, uh, yeah, it, enjoy it, mate. It's not really time off for you, though, is it? Because you still have to plan and prepare ready for when you do go back, I guess. Um, but, yeah, the world's your oyster, hey, mate. You're in that world, and uh, I'm sure you're going to do some amazing things. Definitely excited to see what that is. Quite a, quite a question, actually. You know, with what you've been through and everything now, do you feel like you're more resilient to kind of any negative experience. Like I guess now, like what I'm trying to say is with what you've been through, it was so hard to deal with it to, to like, when you have a really bad day in work or something, do you just kind of think there could always be worse? Like I, I've gone through worse. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I wouldn't be the say I would I would be the first person to complain before going through all this stuff, but it definitely makes you more resilient and really puts perspective on what's important in life. And you're thinking in all those like um you know, those fallouts you get or or, or or those bad words that you have, you know, what what's it worth? You know, we might not get up tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so it's not worth it. Um and to get head, head up about things, you know, end of the day, you know. Leave it a week. Uh, if it's still important to you, then fine. But if it's not, you know, leave it, let it go. It's definitely made me more resilient. And you know, when you when you want to get up in the mornings or or or, or do those shifts, and you know, it, it's 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 just constantly doing it, isn't it? It's 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 putting yourself there, and and knowing that you can do it because I I got I got through that, so I can definitely get through this. You know, there's there's oh, probably nothing worse than. And being, you know, by your your your, your child's um, bed and not knowing if you're waking up tomorrow morning and you're not going to be with them. Do you know what I mean? It's it's it just yeah. goes against the nature of life. So um, being through, going through something like that um, really puts a perspective on on everything else in your life. Yeah, that's mm. what I think. It's true. Is I mean, like you said, when you were doing that hundred and ten miler and whatever else it is you take on when you go through those real real dark moments or pain cave or whatever word you want to use you mm. could just if you take a sit a seat somewhere in the, during the race and just be like i've been through worse this is just my body aching i'm just aching because i'm running that's all i'm, I'm choosing to do this do you know what i mean it's yeah. yeah it's uh i can imagine you're far more resilient now like um both you and your wife you know and to deal with things a lot better i'm sure you still lose your temper and everyone has arguments and everything but i think yeah, there's got to be a point where you just think, yeah, perspective. Like, yeah. just look look over at Mary and appreciate what you've got in there, really. Yeah, absolutely. Really. Yeah, it's what what she's gone through in her little life. You know, is more than what we go through in our whole lives in those first few few weeks of her life. Um, to see her there, you know, um, with all these um drains, you know, she had six drains at one time. You know, two foot getting the air out of her uh, her body and, and four for the fluids. I mean, seeing something like that, you know, it stays with you for life, doesn't it? Um, so, yeah, I've got nothing, nothing to go. Like, dodgy knees, that's nothing, you know. I can still walk, no problem. Um, but, yeah, but seeing, yeah, that, that that was my motivation. If she can go through something like that, I can do this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just thinking of other things as well. Like when I spoke to Scott, me and Nathan spoke to Scott a few weeks ago. He said something that resonated with me about ultras and stuff because he's run 200 miles in America and California and all things like that. And like he said that he actually owes his success in his career to run in ultras. So kind of like a similar thing because he thinks that when he goes into a job interview, if he's really nervous and has got to do a presentation, uh, he's just like, oh, I've been through worse. Do you know what I mean? Like if, Or yeah. is it the other way around, Nathan? Have I got that wrong? He... No, that was right, wasn't it? No, no, so you, we... you are right. Yeah, you are yeah. right. Like, I, I've been like job interviews, or I've had to, um, you know, do a morning assembly in front of you know a thousand kids or whatever. It's like, you know, if I get it wrong, I get it wrong. What's, what's the, you know, there's no no biggie. Um, yeah. So yeah, it definitely puts a perspective, and and yeah, it, it, it's certainly given me more of a, a calmness. I think that's a good way of saying it. Yeah, mm. that's a good way of saying it. Yeah, I, I find myself I process things more rationally since I've been doing them. I like to step outside the situation and I think of it logically. It's like yeah. like when we're going on a long run and we're like we're tired, you sort of like take a step back, don't you? And you think, 
right, I'm tired because I haven't eaten for a while, so I need to get food in. Oh, I'm cramping up. Let's get some water, some salts in. So you think of things more logically, I suppose, since mm-hmm. doing ultras, yeah, which which helps in your day to day job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can also be. It can also work, probably work quite negatively because you're going to end up pushing yourself too far, I guess, as well. Like, from looking at it from a running perspective, like you could be in the middle of a run and um, you start to struggle and you think, this is nothing. I'm only 10K into a run. Why am I even struggling? I ran 100 miles a month ago. And then you push yourself too far because you're thinking, I you broke know, my you, fucking ankle. Yeah. Yeah, I'm invincible. I ran 100 miles with a broken ankle. I can do this. But then before you know it, you're 10 miles from home with no water, no food, no debit card to buy anything. And you're like, oh, fuck that one, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're still going to get moments like that. Of course you are. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's just another day in the office. You know, so you get good days, you get bad days. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it, it, it's definitely... I can resonate with you know being in next to Mari like in those hospitals like like a roller coaster similar to being on an ultra marathon you know you could have this highest of highs like when I went over the bridge that was you know amazing being back in Wales but then you know I had some of the miles I had to do and there was just one straight line for like two three miles and knowing you had to get there low not not eating not drinking and yeah like you say get a, get a bit of food in you uh, and you'll be all right was it yeah. the old seven bridge you had to go across. Yeah, so I had to pass the, the new one to get to the to that one. So uh, it's that was bloody experience. long, isn't it? So long. I was like, you know, you you drive through it and you're thinking, oh, that's nothing. It's a couple of minutes and you, you're gone. But it is. It's about a about a four k because they do. Um, my mate of my Reese, he, he lives nearby and he he does fives and and ten k's up and down it. But yeah, it was a four k and we were going maybe six thirty seven kilometer minutes as well. So yeah, it took a good half hour and into wind as well. Like I've gone across it and uh, I'm thinking. Oh, this bridge don't look too uh, healthy because there's all cracks in the path, isn't it? And you think, and you're looking down, and you're thinking, that's a long way down. I hope this bit of path just it doesn't fall. Honestly, <laughs> it, it it is a long way down. Yeah, crazy long way down. It's like, oh yeah, vertigo. Yeah, really. That. That's mad because yeah. when you're in a car, you don't appreciate it, do you? You just like you said, within a matter of minutes, you're over it. You don't really have a chance to look out, really, because you're concentrating on the road. Mm. Um. Yeah, that's my the views. The views were spectacular. Yeah, really was stunning. Yeah, I'd say yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can imagine they've got. Have they got um, a seven bridge race? Yeah, have they got like, a NK race that goes across it or something, or a marathon or something like that? So, I know you said you got this whiteboard in your garage and stuff, but you know, is there is there anything since doing this that you've thought? you could take on as kind of like a bucket list where you've been, so I'm sure you've probably got the bug and you're on Instagram looking at all these big runs. Have you seen any where you're like, oh, that thing's pretty cool. I'd like to do that. You know what? What did um, my mate Owen send me last night? The, uh, the dragon's back? Oh. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. I was like, hold on now, mate. And it, it's like 1,800 quid as well. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> whoa, no. Is there charity, uh, you know, places for this? So <laughs> if, you, if you volunteer, like the year before, you get a massive discount. No way. Huge. Oh, yeah. yeah. And a lot Huge. of people volunteer, so they get to sort of like learn about sort of like um, kit prep for each day, routines, the course and stuff like that. They make it a bit yeah. easier for the next year. A friend of mine did it. It's like a serious amount of discount as well. Like it takes the cost down to a matter of, a couple of hundred quid, I think, is a serious discount. Um, but then it's also an amazing experience because you get to stand out on the checkpoints on various aspects of the course. You know, if you have any free time, you get to run some of it. If you get up there a little bit early or you stay behind at the end, get to meet people and network with people. And, yeah, and yeah it's, it's, I, it's funny that you said that because that's the one that Nathan always brings up. So you said it before he did. So, yeah. Uh, that's a brutal race. That is absolutely yeah. brutal race. I um I read about it in um in Lo- is it Lori Morgan's uh, book? Um, that was one of the books I read next to. I got uh, a top tip for you. Don't ever go running with Larry. Do you know what <laughs> she um she gave me a message um so SOC as I was saying was filming and um and she wanted to send me her best regards and and give me some few tips just literally five minutes before um I started the race um yeah she's very inspirational fair play. She killed me the other week going out for a run with her. No. Oh. Killed me. 
But uh, I, I, I wish I recorded. I've said it before. It was just like an interview with her. It was just a run, just packed full of knowledge. She was, um, it was amazing. Mm. But yeah, she killed me. That's 3, probably 000... the your ankle. No, three thousand foot, um, eighteen miles in like what, what was it? Three hours flat. Killed me. Um, I, I was dead. Wow. <laughs> wow. It was going to be an easy one for me. My gosh, that's no, mad. Um, hey, I'm just wondering, Carwin. Do you know um, when you sit down with Marley and stuff? Now, do you show her pictures of herself when she's in the hospital? Does she ask questions and stuff about it? Yeah, this, this is this is something like me and Beth Fenn have been toing and froing before even starting this. Because end of the day, she's got no choice in what we've done. Um, you know, we've raised a lot of money for charities, and it, I know it'll go a long way. But you know, it it is Mary's life. End of the day, so um, any interviews that we've done or uh, BBC or S Four C, and um, they've asked us for pictures. You know, we haven't given them some of the first days. Um, those those are just for me and Beth Fenn. Um. Yeah, as you can imagine, you know, they're, they're, she's not in a very good state. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, she's a few weeks older than the ones that we have put out. Um, but no, we haven't we haven't shown her um, what she's gone through. We will. We obviously will sit down, have that conversation with her when the time's right. Um, but what she has done is is look over the um, the Instagram and any time I've gone out or uh, we've been on TV and she's shouting, Daddy, Daddy. And, and who's that then? Mary Glynn. Because her name's Mary Glynn and my name's Carwin Glynn. So we we share the same uh, middle name, which it was my grandfather. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah. So, yeah, she she definitely recognises herself uh, when she sees herself on TV. Oh, man. That's cute. Yeah. Mm, that's mad. And it? it's crazy that she has a, probably has absolutely no idea because they say the first few years of their baby's life, they don't really remember anything. Is it three? And yet mm. what you guys have been through, yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. They're playmate. I'm, I'm, all I can say is I'm glad that Nathan saw the camper van when he did and, and met your father-in-law and went over and spoke to, you know, to him because you know, a pleasure to chat to you about this. Obviously, a play, it's also incredibly heartbreaking, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, Mary's here with us and, and what a journey you've been on. One that you shouldn't have been on, and it sucks that you had to go on it, but you've been on it, and you've gone out there and put yourself through some pain and discomfort and raised an incredible amount of money for some even more incredible charities, mate. So, yeah, well done to you, mate. I mean, if if anybody wants to, because I'm assuming they're still open, because you said that it's gone up over the last few days. If anybody wants to support uh, or get involved with that, like... Um, do you want to see what your is there a dedicated Instagram page other than yours or what the just given is? And... Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my wife set up um, an Instagram page called uh, Tice Mary Glynn Adre, which means Mary Glynn's journey home uh, back here to Llanganur. Uh, and we've got a just giving page on there as well. She's got a, she's done a whole 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 uh, shebang like BBC. Everything's down there for for anyone to see. Um, I know that it's um, we've so this has been a documentary for the past few months with S4C, and they're doing a special now on um, Monday, the 26th of August, on S4C. So there'll be an hour long um, uh, program on on the journey from um, yes, yeah, so for the past few few weeks and months, they've been hounding us and chasing us and coming to events and things. So, and they were with us then for the whole four days filming as well so um, wow. yeah yeah that, that'll, that'll be awesome to see as well we get to see it i think on friday so if there's something we don't like or something like we are can you pull that back um i'm sure they won't be I'm, I'm sure it's awesome um but yeah so yeah 26th of august on s4c at uh i yeah. think half seven 26th of august at half past seven nate let's make sure we get that out there and um we'll make sure we do a post on that because i'd love everyone to watch it and Obviously, yeah, see you enter. It'd probably be mad for you because if they were there for the whole four days, I bet you you'll see points where you'll be like, oh, shit, yeah, that happened. I completely forgot about that because you're in such a strange place to be physically and mentally and just probably your whole body's rising in pain. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, yeah. I, I've, I've spoken to people since then. Do you remember this bit? No. I must have had the <laughs> blinkers on or something. Or, you know, you'd come around a corner, right, guys, I know there's a bit of an incline here. Let's walk it up. I need to see them in the in the distance with the cameras. Oh, 
right, okay, another mile then, <laughs> keep going, keep going, and then we'll rest up here. Um, but you know, no, they've been great. They they weren't they wasn't they weren't telling me where to go or what to do or pace or anything. They were just there, you know, um, just catching the the good and the bad bits. That's good. The reality of it. This is this we all know ultra running or running that kind of distance. Half marathon, full marathon, wherever it's not all unicorns and rainbows. You definitely go through those bad moments. And so it'd be good to uh to see that and see how you got through it, really. We didn't ask actually in terms of sleep. So you were finishing what, what time were you finishing around about? Like how long were you running for every day? So uh because we had to do stops and things like that, because at the end of the day we were a team of people. I had two cyclists, I had runners with me as well. So the first day uh, nine till about four. So what's that? About seven hours with about one and a half or maybe five hours of running or five hours of running, five hours of running first day. So about 43 kilometers, five hours. Second day though, that was, uh, yeah, that was silly because we reached Cow Bridge and realized, oh, there's no pavement here. So we had to do about another 6K on top oh. as well, which didn't help. Um, uh, so yeah, that, that the last, the second day was about half seven finishing. And then the third day at about six o'clock and the last day then, while I was home, wasn't I? So I knew the roads well. So I was back by about half past three, uh, ready for the party then. Nice. And um, for the three nights prior, you had the hotel. Did you see so you were getting your head down? What was your sleep like between? Were you just like conking out or did you struggle to sleep because of the adrenaline and stuff? Or Yeah, so the, the first night, obviously, you know, I couldn't sleep much looking at my, my, my phone, probably about four and a half proper sleep. And then the second and the third day. What I have been doing the past past few weeks has been taking magnesium. Um, I found that that oh. definitely helps. The um, I can't remember what it, it's in a pot. Um, but anyway, it, it's yeah, triple magnesium, and that certainly helped me sleep. You know, you sleep deprived anyway with the kids, so anything you can get. Um, but I didn't sleep. I didn't sleep any time during the, those days. I might have closed my eyes maybe five or ten minutes here and there. But no, no deep, you know, snoring, sleeping anyway. So, um, yeah, just filled with adrenaline, really. So you, you, you know, your eyes are closed, but you're still going through the day uh, every single day. So, uh, yeah, did yeah. as much as I. Can. You try to still process that, aren't you? It's like that after the big runs, you lay down and you just, yeah. I, I, I always find after big runs, I can't stop dreaming about the race, and it really annoys me because I want to just sleep and not think about it. Mm. But it's just your mind is still processing it. I think you said about it earlier on, it's like almost as if like immediately after the run, you felt really, really strong, like you could have kept going. But then a couple of days later, your HRV went down. I think it's your body's way of just going, OK, that's what we were doing, but this is what we're now doing. You need to, and it's just everything. It's kind of like it's a dump of energy and all of it goes and then all the aches and pains are, and you're like, yeah, OK, there it is. But. Yeah, mate, fair play to you. That's um, what an incredible challenge, mate. What, what, a, what an inspiring guy you are and um, and fair play to you and your wife for, you know, for what you've been through. Um, and I'm, I think I can speak for Nate as well. Man. I, I cannot wait to see this documentary of everything you've been through and, and hopefully get this story out there, mate, so people are listening to this as well and, and you can get a few more quid raised as well. So, yeah. Thank you ever so much, mate, for coming on. It's been amazing. It's been really cool chatting to you. Well, thank thank you guys for for doing this. It really we really appreciate people that you know we raise as much awareness as we can of these charities and and so that you know any parent that goes through this kind of thing um, can can sleep a little bit more soundly or slightly more comfortable um, next to their child as they get as they get better. Yeah. Agreed. We're definitely going to put this information out on the links and stuff because they're charities that definitely need to be out there um and need to be known but yeah mate well done for what you did and for completing that and the money that you raised for all those amazing causes um and yeah uh, we won't take up much more of your time we'll let you go and give mari a big cuddle after this i'm sure you want to <laughs> yeah absolutely i do yeah thanks guys See you no all, problem look after yourself carwin nice to meet you mate hopefully you guys. The soon. no star all of us no star no star cheers bud Thanks so much, guys, for listening and for tuning in. And if we could please ask for your support going forward. So please, please like, comment and subscribe on our YouTube videos and follow us on Spotify and Apple. We really appreciate all of your support. Hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. And please just look in the link for 
any further information about the charities that Carwin has been given to and raising awareness for. They're amazing. And also look out for more information coming soon about the Cardiff running show. Uh, we're involved with that. It's going to be exciting. It's Cardiff's first running show. So stay tuned. Thank you, guys. Cheers, guys. Bye.